Hello, beautiful souls. I have a an impromptu video. So yesterday, I worked a lot with Hathor. And as we were kind of bouncing ideas off each other, um, I made the statement that the collective needs coaching on sin in their body love. And that was part of a bigger conversation about healing the body. So as you may or may not know, we consider the physical body, just one of our many bodies that we energetically give attention to. And this was all new to me when I first started all this, um, you know, I had to expand my ability to um, consider new ideas. And so I always work with the physical body, the emotional body, the spiritual body, the energy body, the mental body. So you do understand then that there are interwoven of energies that affect one and the others. Okay. None of them are isolated where there is a, an order of progression, I would say though. So <clears throat> as we come to under accept we're energy, we are energy bodies and we live in an, in a world where everything is literally energy and very much frequency and vibration rules everything all the way down to the, the electrons, right? So even the most scientific brains, they, they tend to just stomp their feet and kick whenever they're, they're faced with this truth. So I definitely invite you to expand your awareness and open yourself up to maybe some things that you haven't considered before, but are very real. They have very real world ramifications. So we want to discuss sending love to our imperfect body. It's a big deal. We live in a world where the form is what gets all the attention. Okay. And I've seen, I've witnessed that the pretty people, well, their bad behavior gets excused a lot easier than the people that aren't so easy on the eyes. What sense does that make? None. But it's how we're grown up in a culture that really manipulates the workings of our mind. And so, and, and some mental body that makes sense. And whenever the mental body, the mind, the ego starts to bully the rest of your bodies into believing that this is the way it should be, the rest of the bodies feel the effect of that imbalance of energy because it is an imbalance of energy. And a very long, torturous neglect of the energy body, the spiritual body, the emotional body, the mental body, it manifests in problems, issues, imbalances, diseases of the physical body. There are many, many times I have seen working in the emergency department and people come in for the same things all the time. And I'm just going to let you know, when you go to the ER, they're checking for two things. Do you have a surgical problem or do you have something that can be corrected with a medication? And if it doesn't fall under those two categories, they don't have anything to offer you. So a lot of people do have physical symptoms that manifest out of a energy problem which manifests out of a spiritual problem or an emotional problem or a mental problem. These are very real. They need to be given the, the really real context of effect that they have in your life. So we're going to talk about that today. What do you give toxic energy to? And what do you give non-toxic energy to in reference to your body? 
We're talking about your body. So how often do you curse your body? How often do you say, you know, like maybe, maybe your legs are not as strong as they used to be. And you say like these damn legs or other things that are disempowering and, and toxic. How often do you hit yourself? I used to see this all the time and I still do, but on a smaller scale, cause I really don't go out with the peoples very much, but I used to see this all the time. Somebody would be trying to physically do something or think of something and they hit themselves against the head or it doesn't go as well as it should. And they hit themselves, you know, on the leg or the arm there and you're physically attacking your body. What is that supposed to do? What is the message there? Have you ever thought about it? When's the last time you compared your body to someone else's body? Now that is a huge issue. We are flooded in social spaces of comparisons from body to body. And so much so that the little ones get bombarded and they don't know which end is up they don't know that it's you know okay to look different they really feel like they have to look like everyone else or they just don't fit in because that's what the social spaces tell us but that's not right and that's not normal when's the last time you limited yourself as far as what you're able and capable to do based on what you thought your body could do you just assumed that you couldn't do or participate in anything, something specific. And your excuse is your body because the way your body looks or the way it functions or it doesn't function. So you're missing out on life. When's the last time you used disempowering words towards your body? Like you forgot something at the grocery store and you're like, I'm just so stupid. Or you went into a room and forgot what you went in the room for. And I'm so absent-minded. I would lose my head if it wasn't attached. Now, I'm guilty of it. I've done it. I've done it a lot. But over the last couple of years, I have really got a different appreciation, a different perspective for the power of words. And we're taught words in school that disempower us. So we're like, no one, you really have to put forth the effort to not disempower yourself using words because it's everywhere. So this has to be a daily priority for you and a very conscious awareness for you. And when's the last time you allowed other people to use hurtful words towards you in reference to your body? I encounter a lot of people that say harmful things about their own body because they anticipate someone else saying something harmful about their body and they just want to beat it to the beat them to the punch. It's almost like they feel like their words are less impactful or less hurtful and they they kind of put it off like they're making fun of themselves and so it's okay. And I feel bad for them. I feel bad for them because it's definitely something that's come from the conditioning and the the overt ag aggression of the words being slung at these these individuals. When's the last time you sought out a medical diagnosis for a physical problem and they found nothing? This is very frustrating for the collective. I have witnessed it for 25 years. People do have physical manifestations, physical issues, dis-ease, imbalances. I now know that they're not, by and large, looking for attention. They're looking for validation, that they're feeling something real. Even though the CAT scan doesn't show you have a surgical process or there's not a diagnosis attached to um, support your claim. I'm here to tell you 
If you fall into that category, it's more than likely that you have allowed, and you have to take accountability for allowing it, a measure of mental, spiritual, emotional abuse that has manifested in a physical form to get your attention, to wake up and stop and correct the problem. The source of the problem is not surgical. That's true. The source of the problem cannot be fixed with a prescription. That's also true. But what can help is understanding that what we are actually doing to our bodies, because it's what everyone does, it just the norm, understanding the energy that flows from your words, with your words, into your physical form and other beings' physical form. It causes wounds. They're called core wounds. When you sling hurtful words at other people, it causes wounds in their energy field, in their energy body. Over time of not dealing with these things, the energy gets very stuck. It doesn't move. It gets blocked. There are also usually things that go along with that, like negative entities, negative implants, curses, hexes, spells, all these things that people are using against you to disempower you, some overtly, some just by a matter of opening up an app on your phone and you're attacked and you don't even know it because we've become so accustomed to hearing it and seeing it and feeling it. We just don't even recognize it anymore. So are you more comfortable with degrading yourself than accepting compliments for your body? Is it easier for you to accept an insult than a compliment? And I'll be honest with you. I was there. I was there for a while and it's still rather uncomfortable. I'm, I really don't aspired to have compliments I just want to be I want to be in a neutral state of gratitude and love and allowing accepting of energies that come and go and also choosing my energy that I exchange with others it be in the highest and best good I don't aspire to have compliments. I don't aspire to be put on a pedestal. I don't aspire to be anything other than me. But it's gotten easier when people do give me appreciation or things like that, where it was like super uncomfortable before, because that's all I was used to. We get used to negative things and it becomes comfortable. And that is a fucking shame. Like we got to stop the madness. We have to. It's not just you. It's you and the other billions of people on the planet. We're all equally messed up and abused in this situation. So that's kind of like the, the toxic stuff that happens on a day-to-day -day basis, a very small sample, but you, re you re recognize it, you relate to it, you've seen it, you've heard it, you felt it. What do we do about it? Well, we flipped the freaking table. Yes, Joshua. We flip the table. We don't, we no longer accept it. We no longer accept it. But there's a few things that I want to recommend. Works for me, works for many. If you give it a chance, first of all, give your body love. And I mean that true, genuine, heartfelt love. When you have a sore throat, think about what it is that you've been wanting to say, that you've been holding in. What's the conversation that you've been meaning to have that you have not had yet? What's the truth that you've been intending to speak, but you haven't done that yet? What's the tension that is in your throat because you haven't exercised it to clear the space, to clear the energy? Think about it. I bet you'll come up with a few things. The physical manifestations of energy blockages gives us pain. It, you can feel it. So unblock the energy. When we look at a body, a 
physical form. What I really want you to understand is you chose your body. You chose it. If you're really, really short, you chose to be really, really short in this life. If you're really tall, you chose that too. If you have big feet and a short body, you chose that too. Whatever your body looks like, you chose it. You chose your name. You chose the date that you were going to arrive. So nothing happened. Like you, you happened. You exercised your free will choice as an energy being, as a soul. When you raised your hand and said, I want to go down there and live on earth school. And I'm going to be short. And I'm going to be very round. And I'm going to love it. And then, you know, earth school taught you some hard lessons. So accept it. Send your body love. And I mean that. I mean it. Does your body function for you? There are many people that have bodies that do not function well. Some of it is energy problems. Some of it is trauma. Some of it is a combination of all sorts of things. But there's always a, a catalyst. There's always something that occurred. And then when you look at it from a spiritual perspective, was that something in my soul contract to give me the opportunity to grow and expand and how I think and feel and sense the world and all my bodies? It's like when you lose one of your senses. So you no longer can see. The other senses step up their game so that you have a more expansive appreciation for the world around you. So much so that sometimes those abilities go off the charts, right? Blessings in, in the wake of a hurdle. It's up to you what you do with it. None of us are perfect. This isn't a, this isn't a planet of perfection. It's meant to be a planet of turning your pain into purpose. So let's work on that. Send your body love. When you get up in the morning and your back is a little bit stiff, send it love because your back does so much in a day that we take for granted. Have you ever had a bad back? Have you ever hurt your back and it hurt to breathe? It really hurt to sneeze. Can you control that? Not very well. It hurts to blink. Do you thank your spine for being strong in this, in spite of not being treated very well, usually? I mean that this is a dynamic shift of energy that you yourself can do for you yourself. And it ripples out throughout the collective. Forgive your body for being weak. Forgive your body for the imperfections. Forgive your body for the the fragileness of the state of it because it's been living on this gangster fucking planet dealing with all the things that we get, get attacked with things that we do to ourselves through bad choices things that we allow to happen through moments of weakness things that we have uh, cultivated as vices to help cope with earth school i'm not pointing fingers. I'm not assigning shame or blame or guilt or any of that. We do that enough to ourselves. In that sense, please be gracious. Please give gratitude to your body for being able to see. Give gratitude to your body that you can stand and rise from a bed, a chair, and walk. There's a lot of people that don't have that ability anymore, or they never did. Be grateful that you have it. Stop disempowering your beautiful body that you chose because it doesn't look like somebody on a TV show. Their body didn't look like that either when they first started out. Overcoming the environmental stuff is huge. We live in a world with toxic food, toxic water, toxic habits, Cigarettes, drugs, alcohol, food, sugar. And our toxic schedules, our life. You want to say, ah, why am I so tired all the time? But you never say no to anything. And your schedule of 
time that you give away and your energy that you give away to everything and everyone else keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And what the, what you give to yourself is very, very small or non-existent. So of course your body's going to suffer. All of your bodies are going to suffer. It's time to take accountability for what we're doing to ourselves and what we're allowing to be done to us and take a stand. If you want things to change, you have to be willing to change things. It's just that simple. Do you ever stop to consider that the work your physical body is doing <laughs> is the absolute best that can be done in the circumstances that you have created and co-created with your free will choice? That's a real thing. Why should any physician, given them a measure of credit, why should any physician have a pill, a magic pill, a magic wand, a surgery or whatever to reverse all your bad decisions? Why? Is that going to change things? Are you going to no longer make bad decisions? Not unless you change how you make your decisions and what you base your decisions on. It all comes back to frequency and vibration. The energy body that we are, that is in our form. Not the other way around. And the long-term ignoring of the energy body and the things that, that we allow to happen with our energy body ultimately causes the long progressive effect in the physical form of neglect. We neglect ourselves and then we go to someone else and say, fix me. <laughs> okay. Let, where, where should we start? <laughs> so understanding, number one, we are energy. We are energy. Okay, we are energy bodies inside of an avatar, inside of a physical form. When this physical form decays and dies, and gets buried or cremated or whatever, the energy body that you are leaves intact, whole, complete onto the next life. Think about that. You're going to spend your entire life putting yourself under the microscope over the physical form you chose and then did not like or neglected and then was mad about all the things that transpired because of that. And you neglected the one thing that exists after death, the energy body, which is closely tied to the spiritual body. And all of it is intertwined. All of it is interwoven. So what kind of woven basket are you making? What, what are you putting into your energy that is going to create something different? We do co-create our reality. That's why we all have to take accountability for the reality that, that we're in. If you're flipping miserable because of the reality that you are in, change it. Change it. Change one thing. One thing. Start small. Change it. And then see how that changes other things without even really thinking about it. Because it's a domino effect. That energy changes things. It ripples. You go to a different timeline. This is all real stuff. If you want to give yourself the opportunity to really, truly see a different side of what living looks like, I really do invite you to do this. So what can you do? What's a practical thing you can do? Have you ever heard of the swear jar? Those were fun, weren't they? <laughs> well, let's flip the script, okay? So instead of it being a swear jar, it's going to be a body attack jar. Because we got all these bodies, emotional body, mental body, spiritual body, physical body, on and on. Make it a daily practice to be aware. Notice your own body attacks that you hurl at yourself. Notice others who so easily 
hurl and sling body attacks at you or other people or at them themselves and bring attention to it lovingly. Lovingly. I'll give you an example. So you have a coworker and there's some sort of mistake in communication that occurs and their response is, I'm so stupid. I'm so stupid. And you hear it. And you've heard it a thousand times. But today you hear it differently because you've seen this video. And you think, this is one of those moments she was talking about where we can facilitate change because we step in and we change the normal flow of things. So how am I going to do this? So you can say, you can point out these words are powerful. How do you want your your physical form to respond to the energy attack you just hurled at yourself by calling yourself stupid? How do you feel whenever someone else calls you stupid? Like it doesn't feel good, does it? It's not a good word. You know, you're capable of so much. And I believe it's probably that you're tired. We're all so tired in our schedules. When's the last time you got outside? Let's go take a walk. Let's go let the sun hit our face. Let's feel the breeze. Let's give gratitude for that. Let's just take it down a notch. You know, in that moment, you can identify so many things that led up to I'm so stupid and erase it. It's gone. All of a sudden, this coworker no longer feels the weight of the mistake, the weight of the, miscon the miscommunication and being stupid because they went ahead and called themselves stupid because they just know the whole office is calling them stupid. Like this is a whole internal dialogue thing that plays out time and time and time again. Let's stick a stick in the spoke of that wheel and stop it. Get off the crazy train. If you continue to do the same thing over and over again and expect a different outcome, that is a definition of insanity. Let's stop that. So you flip the script. You take that person that obviously needs a break and needs some love and needs some forgiveness and needs some gratitude and you give it to them. <laughs> Who would have thought? Love, forgiveness, and gratitude. Get out in nature. And that disempowering, ugly word is erased. The effects of it is gone. And let's work on doing that every time. So the, the, you don't put a quarter in the jar so much. I mean, you can if you want, whatever you want to do it. But you want to really invest positive energy into the vessel. The vessel that has been attacked. Is it your vessel? Is it your coworkers? Is it your children? Think about the things we tell our children and then we expect them to excel. Think about the times that we're yelling at them to go to bed and then we expect them to go to sleep and we just hurt their feelings. We just told them things that they'll probably carry with them the rest of their lives because we're tired. You see how this is a domino effect? Give yourself love. Give your body love and love it in a way, not so that it could sustain this incredible, stupid schedule. Yes, I said stupid because it's a choice. Cut back on things that are taking away and robbing you of your health, of your mental stability, of your spiritual focus. And yes, your energy flow. It is all connected. So your coworker can say, I love this feeling. Like, why, why did I ever say that about myself? Because we hear it all the time. We get accustomed. We get numb to the disempowering words. We were taught these things in the school. It was made to be okay. They made it okay. It's not okay. Let's change things. Even if it's just me and you in the office. Let's just hold each other accountable. And you know what? Before you know it, you start a revolution. 
you start a revolution of positive change and you call people out on their disempowering words and you give them love for it. I don't know that you could ever get called into HR because you're giving people love, forgiveness, and gratitude in verbal form. I'm not talking about feeling people up and, and, you know, like giving them hugs when it's not invited, but you can do that energetically. I want you to really think about this. Please listen to it again. I think it's a message that really comes home. Send love, send love from your heart space to all involved. If you're the only one talking bad to yourself in your life, then you're going to have to go to the mirror and you're going to have to have a talk with yourself because you are disempowering and abusing yourself for whatever reason. But then you want to give yourself forgiveness and forgive every single person involved. If something transpired, you were involved in it. Give yourself forgiveness. Everyone involved, true forgiveness. Give it gratitude. Every experience that we have offers us lessons, especially the painful ones, especially the ones that we got to climb out of that comfort zone and develop maybe a new way, a new approach. And coming from a heart perspective, coming from a love perspective, that's the key. When you hear love is the key, I really want you to think about that. Love is transformative completely can transform dark to light and it is within all of us to do this so if you truly want to see the world change start with yourself love forgiveness and gratitude and send your imperfect perfect body love every single day thank you for joining me today and i'll see you again next time